Welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with the Rise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast. And today, we're diving into a topic that often confuses many buyers. The difference between getting a mortgage from a bank versus a mortgage broker. So if you're in the process of purchasing a home or planning to, you know, this episode is great. and You might get a lot of value out of it. So let's do this. Okay, so I know, I know this topic can be a little bit controversial because, well, I'm a mortgage broker. <laughs> And you're going to be like, oh, here's John making this podcast, going to convince people to go towards a mortgage broker. Okay, yes. Of course, I'm going to be totally biased. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to really do my best to be as impartial as possible so that you would know the pros and cons of going to a bank or a broker for your mortgage. So I'm going to break this down into two episodes. And just to show you how genuinely I want to be fair for, for this, uh, for this uh, topic, I'm going to start off with why you should go with the bank and avoid using a mortgage broker. So let's dive in and check out what's great about going directly to the bank. Well, first off, there's... A direct relationship. So this is a great option if you have a relationship with your bank already. I know for me, I had my bank account like with RBC, Leo the Lion. I had that with the passbook, like long time client. And if your banking is already there and it's an easier process, well, because a good chunk of your information is with them already. So you may not need to submit any bank statements because they can just pull it up. You don't need to submit your IDs because they can verify you already and other personal information. So this can reduce a lot of amount of paperwork. Whereas if you're working with a broker, you're likely going to be a brand new client with any bank. So we're going to need your IDs, bank statements, and a lot of other information. So um, that may cause you to be like, you know what? It's too much of a headache. I'm just going to go with my bank. Number two, well, this can be a pro and a con. It's limited options. So a bank can only offer you what they can offer. Uh, this means your options might be limited compared to what a broker can provide. But, you know, if you don't care because you actually really love your bank and you want to see everything when you sign on to your online banking, then, hey, go with your bank. Uh, and, you know, sometimes brokers may offer other options, but if your bank is offering the best option already and you find it convenient dealing with them, go for it. Next would be, you know, banks, they do have better branding. Now, everyone would know the big five banks. They know the colors. They're very well established. For someone who is purchasing their new home, um, they want to ensure they're dealing with someone with confidence. And all the marketing, like banks, they will spend millions of dollars just in marketing just to ensure that you, know, you are feeling comfortable dealing with them as a borrower. Banks also have great history, hundreds of years of history in their business. So no doubt, no, you can trust their name and this will give a sense of security dealing with them. Brokers, yes, they do have access to banks for sure. But uh, if you want to deal directly with a bank representative, then yeah, you will have to walk in the branch and talk to someone. Brokers, unfortunately, we don't have millions of dollars for marketing budget. So you likely, what, the best way is probably like check our Google reviews maybe. Um, or, or maybe 
it's referred to someone that they're like, oh, this guy is great. You should talk to them. Well, uh, we cannot compare in terms of like the branding. Um, so be because we don't have the budget. So if you feel more comfortable, feel secure dealing directly with the bank, totally go for it. Um, it may or may not mean they're better. Oh, here I am being trying to like <laughs> be biased towards Forgeware. I guess I will stop on this. Um, yes, they have a larger marketing budget, so they're much more well known. Bundle services uh, will be the next one. Uh, banks often provide discounts or perks if you have multiple products with them. So if you have a checking account, savings account, credit card, and so on, they may give you. Um, maybe a slightly lower rate or cash back. The banks, they, they have access to some perks that brokers may not. And banks, they're also a little bit more flexible on their guidelines in order to make your mortgage approval work. Whereas dealing with a mortgage broker may be a little more rigid. The reason is because there is a higher standard for brokers because we're not the bank's or the lender's employees. Banks generally want to be more cautious dealing with a third party like mortgage brokers versus dealing with their own employees. There are times where a bank can get a file approved to win it by you know, making some exceptions, their guidelines and so on versus if a broker does it, we may not be able to get it done because we need to follow more closely to the guidelines. Oh, rates. Oh, rates may be lower. It may be. Sometimes brokers lower, sometimes banks are lower. It really depends on the season. Um, but uh, it boils down to the relationship. If you have a good relationship with them, and if you have a lot of cash, a lot of investments in the bank, no, they may be able to help you out to secure it. Brokers will need to shop around for a better rate, but because we're placing to file as a brand new client, with other lenders, sometimes we just, we just can't compete and we just have to let it go. Okay, so those are the, the list I have. See, it, it's not too bad, right? <laughs> with the part one of the mortgage showdown between bank or broker. So thank you for tuning in in this uh, episode. We hope that uh, this discussion is helpful and informative. So don't forget to subscribe to our podcast for more tips and insights on home buying mortgages, um, finances, and real estate. Stay tuned for part two as I talk about why you should work with a broker instead. If there are any questions or, or topics you'd like us to cover, uh, feel free to reach out. Until next time, I'll keep achieving your approval. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.